Welcome to the cellar. Welcome to the cellar. What up? Got a good tutorial for you guys today. Uh, been working on these product videos. I had a big, big shoot for the, uh, a couple about a month ago and uh, put in editing and stuff. But I came across a couple of good tutorials I wanted to share with you that I use pretty much all the time in my workflow. And I thought if you didn't know these already, they're pretty simple but and they're pretty quick and they're definitely something you should add to your uh, toolbox if you're using it. So these are all done in Premiere Pro uh, using AE. I'm going to do these today in uh, the new Premiere Pro CC and AECC, which uh, I've been getting familiar with and uh, kind of like uh, for the most part, except for a few little kinks, which I'm sure they're going to work out, but for the most part, I've been pretty happy with it, uh, especially with some of the changes, which have increased the speed of my workflow. Uh, but I'm going to go over that on another tutorial. Today, we're going to go over how to use the um, clone stamp tool in AE, but uh, starting from Premiere. So what we're going to do is, uh, and I run into this all the time, and I'll show you right here. So as you can see here, in this here, we have a gate, and that's what this video is uh, on. It's about this gate. And right here, we're showing a close-up of the hinge cover and how easy it is to remove with a screwdriver. But the problem here is we want the focus to be on this right here. However, <laughs> the problem is that we have all of these marks in the wall, and that's kind of taking the focus off. And that came from shooting a whole bunch of different gate videos during the day. Uh, this was kind of unavoidable. We tried cleaning them and so forth and so on, but with the exception of repainting each and every time, it became just something that was going to have to be done in post as opposed to, uh, you know, with these close-up shots. So that's where we're at right now. So I wanted to show you how I go about this uh, so you can do this as well. So here we go, just putting the hinge cover on. What I want to look for here is where the movement is because I'm going to actually be painting uh, over this. So there's going to be layers on top of this. So if there's any movement in it, that would, uh, the, so, okay, if there's, so let's say I put a little paint here and stuff, a little clone stamp tool here, which I'll go over there, and her hand goes over it, then that little area that's on there will now be on her hand and it will be noticeable. So you'd have to mask out her hand going over and so forth and so on, which becomes tedious. So the first thing you like to do is see if you can avoid any of that. Uh, this is usually done best when it's a set shot. Obviously, handheld would be uh, a lot more complicated. Um, but uh, if you have a set shot and you're tight and this is an issue you have, which I've run into before, this is a great... Uh, Thing to be able to rely on so what we're going to do here is look and if you notice from basically everything going on in this shot from the screwdriver coming in we could see right there you could see where that where it hits the mark right there so bang so we can remove pretty much all of this and all of this uh, and make this wall look uh, look like it was brand new and that's what we're gonna do now so the first thing I'm gonna do is step one is I'm going to actually duplicate this clip and I'm gonna hold, do that by holding the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC I believe and you just hold it and lift up and now you'll duplicate the clip the reason I do that is if I uh, once I turn this into an After Effects composition I will no longer have access to this clip in Premiere it will now be just like this pink clip is over here so uh, in order to still have access to that when I start out I duplicate the clip so if I ever want to go back and start again I can uh, without having to undo so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply I don't want to pick any colors here then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply hold down the control key or uh, yeah hold down the control key or right click on a PC and uh, you're going to replace with After Effects composition now one of the key things I wanted to go over when you do this I always open a file and I associate one After Effects file with my entire Premiere file and I do this because if you let's say you're editing one day and then you close out and then you open it up again if you go to you know replace with after effects composition it won't pull from the last file you pulled from it will just start a brand new file and then you'll have multiple files that your premiere is pulling from i like personally for the m most part to uh, have everything in one file uh, for the type of projects i'm doing that might not be for every project but for the type of projects i'm doing i like to always have one after effects file associated with m that premiere file uh... so that i know everything's together and it's easy to find and keep track of so what happens here is I'm now in this now there's a uh, composition thing here and that's because uh, we shot in 4k of the red footage and I'm finishing in premiere in 1080p so um, what happens is when I pull the 1080p comp it, it comps it in AE so I have to go to the original comp to be able to use the clone stamp tool so I'm gonna double click this composition here uh, so I'm just gonna open the composition and I'm gonna wind up here now here's the clip now if you notice this is the entire clip because of that situation so we know that we used 
this one is which one I used. Um, but it doesn't really matter. They're all pretty much the same with regards to where the screwdriver is uh, when we're going to mask out. So I'm going to go with this, and I'm going to actually go right to the part where there. And I'm going to start here. Now what I'm going to do here is we're going to use a clone stamp tool, which is Command or Control B on your uh, on your you know for your shift keys unless you've changed them um, or it's up here if you can see right here I'm over it right now the clone stamp tool so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the clone stamp tool and we're gonna make sure we're on the layer and you'll see it it appears this way it'll actually pull it up in a separate uh, window and you'll have this little uh, little dot right here so what is the clone stamp tool so basically what the clone stamp tool is doing is it's basically we're gonna tell it where to select pixels that are already in the frame and we're gonna paint those pixels in that area over top of this area to make it look brand new and here's how we're gonna do that so I'm gonna hold down the option key <laughs> I'll do that I'm gonna hold down the option key first actually the most important thing I should tell you is you wanna be at the beginning of the frame um, when you do this it just makes it easier well, actually, you know what? We're going to actually do it differently. You want to be at the beginning of the frame when you do it because you want to make sure they're all even. But for this purposes, I think it's actually better. If I, In my workflow, what I would normally do is I would go to this frame, and then I would just pull all the clips to the whole length. So we'll, we'll go through that so you understand exactly how this works. It's probably better that way anyway. So from here, I'm going to now hold down the option key, and I'm going to... Wait. Sorry. I'm on the wrong thing here. I got off the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to hold down the option key. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick part of the frame that I want to paint from. So I see this is very clean over here. And I seem to have a little bit of room of area. Because what you're doing is you're picking the pixels here. So if I pick this and I start to paint, I can't paint everything just the same pixel. It's going to pull as if this is a, uh, a picture here. So if I'm picking this section and I start to paint over here this and I start to paint all the way up here. Well then from this section it's going to pull what's over here to over there. And that's going to be marked up. So I want to make sure I stay in the same area and uh, kind of go on. And you can see, actually I don't like that it's a little not because of this edge you can see the different shadows so you want to stay nice and tight there um, when you go through and each time you hold down the button and let go you're creating a new paint file so just be aware of that sometimes you want to hold it down for longer and sometimes you want to make sure that you get a lot in one paint file so it's easy to keep track of and as you can see this is cleaning up relatively nicely so far looking natural doesn't look like uh, we've done anything that's gonna be out of the ordinary here what we're gonna do is this one's kind of tricky see how it's on the corner here we're gonna go down this way and then we're gonna take this side here paint just a little bit over there tight and make it kind of give it that wall mark um, as you can see I'm filling in nicely here okay I think we're looking pretty good so far let's get this over here that color is better right there alright now let's go to approach this stuff over here but over here you can see I'm pulling from a nice area that's very much in a similar shadow for what we're going for I'm just going over this marking here really want to clean this up here see how nice some easy work actually see that wasn't the same color so we want to pull from there um, looking good looking good see. and then here let's get rid of this group too see that's not really the same color Almost done. All 
I think this could even be a little bit better. I think we're looking pretty good here. Um, I'm going to probably take this out a little bit more here. Yeah, just a little bit there. Just a little bit there. And really just finish that up there. And now we're looking, we got a pretty clean wall here. And if we go through, now what I'm going to show you is, if you go down into this composition here, what you see here, if you pull down and you press the E button, which will bring up your effects, you'll see that you have paint here. And when you scroll down here, you'll see all the markings that I made. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Command A. I'm going to click on one and I'm going to press Command A to select them all. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to drag these out through the whole file so that they're consistent on the whole file now. And you can see all the markings here. Then all I'm going to do here is I'm going to save, okay, which is going to save the project. And now I'm done here and everything will be updated in Premiere when I go back. So we're going to go back to Premiere here. We're going to check out our composition here on the right and you can see how it's going to change here as soon as it updates. Let's save Premiere. And there we go. So you can check out the difference now. If it'll let me play the file. Place the hinge covers on the hinges. It's playing a little slow here, but as you can see, we pretty much have everything covered with the wall. So I'm going to show you what this looks like now by turning off this file here. See? Nothing, no problems here. Nothing over top. Everything's covered. And if I take off this here, look at the difference of that wall. So I'm going to pull this up actually in the other window so you can see the difference here. I'm going to put them on. Look at the difference here with that wall over here. And this was probably about a good, what, two, three, four minutes of work. Uh, and that's it. And look how much difference that wall is. It's cleaned up here and focuses back on the hinge cover where we need it to be. So uh, hope you guys learned something real quick. Uh, also, I wanted to show you, this is a really good way now to send to your client. What I've been doing here is I've been using this little button here, uh, Shift E on a Mac. I'm not sure if it's the same thing on a PC. Uh, or you can just set this little camera button here in, in CC by going over here and adding the button and, uh, and clicking it in. But what this does is this exports the frame. So what I'll do here is I'll export this frame and I'll export this frame and I'll send it to the client because the client will never notice that this went down. And part of the benefit of this was that when I was when we were shooting this is we were doing this uh, we were trying to get a lot accomplished during the day uh, and we were helping the client out by getting a lot accomplished during the day, knowing that we would have to do this in post. So now bringing to the attention of hey check check out what we were able to accomplish here. You know we know you were very worried about the way the wall looked while you were on set. Here's what we were able to do about that. And now I'll be able to show this with a quick uh, export of frame by having these two compositions. And, uh, and now we're good to go. So thanks, guys. Uh, talk to you soon. I got a bunch of great tutorials coming up. Uh, I learned a lot about CC that I want to bring to your attention. I'm going to go over my keyboard shortcuts uh, and a couple other things. So looking forward to it, man. And thanks for following.